was unique to me, right? Because most times when I think of taking games, I always think of the two being the lowest and the ace being the highest, ace, king, queen, jack, 10, so on and so forth. And with this, it's a little different. and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer card game review for the game Al Bastini, the game that started off with Roots in Tanzania, in which you're playing a trick-taking game. Normally the base game, or the original game I should say, had four different suits, but this game has been reimagined with eight suits now. You can play a multiplayer trick-taking game as well as you can play it in teams and it plays seven and up two to eight players and it's about it's about 15 to 30 minutes to play the game. And the way it works is you can play two on two, you play three on three, you can play two on two on two, or of course you can just play everybody against each other. And the way it works is pretty simple actually. It's a basic trick-taking game for the most part in which you're going to be dropping down cards based on the main suit. You're going to obviously Obviously create a starting suit and whoever gets the highest card from the main suit or the trump suit or if that is not in existent than the starting suit then that player is going to take everything they basically eat the cards and hold them into a little space in their area and the game is going to progress as players draw cards they'll start with five and play cards out there and attempt to gather or eat as many cards as they possibly can now of course when you're playing with teams you have to work together to determine who has what cards what cards are available in the deck and because there's only a limited amount of each different type of set you kind of get an idea of who has what cards and what they're playing when they're choosing not to play cards some cards are worth points other cards are not worth points and definitely playing this game in a team setting with as many players as possible is going to create the most competitive most strategic aspect of the game Al Bastini uh, I actually never played the original game in fact the game that I played as a kid was Hearts which is a trick-taking game of sorts or it is a trick-taking game one of the original ones um, and this one here of course is also another uh, really old game game that involves trick taking. It has some unique twists and turns to it. It has a set of cards that's actually different than how I would normally play the game hearts based on the value or quality of the cards, which we'll go ahead and take a look down below. I'll show you how to play, what comes in the game, and then we'll come up and I'll give you my review. And then if you'd like, you can check out the Kickstarter link down below if you'd like to pick up the game Al Bastini. So here we have the game of Al Bastini, and it looks like an average set of playing cards, but I can guarantee you that it is not. It will come in this tech tuck box here, and these are the cards included. I have a fresh one over here, which I can show you as to how it's going to be set up. There are eight different colors, which are basically going to revolve around symbols. So you have the circle one here, you're gonna have the square here, and you're gonna have the star here, and so on and so forth. Each set is going to start with a three, four, five, and six. These are all the zero value cards. Then you're going to have the queen, the jack, you're going to have the king, the seven, and the ace. And these are all the point cards. Queen is the lowest and ace is the highest. So you'll notice that the queen and then the jack, jack is actually worth more than the queen, and the seven is worth more than the king. So get your... Uh, hearts out of here don't think about that anymore this is going to be a different style of game as far as what is going to be higher or lower in the points ratio and as you can see these are all of the different eight sets you're going to be getting of cards that formulate the game and to start the game off it's pretty simple based on the number of players you're just going to go ahead and take this deck of cards you're going to go ahead and shuffle it up which i've already done and then deal out five cards to every player and i'll just go ahead and show you a three player game just to give you an idea of what it's going to look like now obviously Obviously, this is a game I would definitely recommend you play in teams, but because we're not doing that here, because of the, just giving you an example, we're just going to go ahead and show you the basic idea of how to play. Each player has got their five cards, and they can organize them how they'd like, if they'd like, and then they're going to begin this trick-taking game. To start off with is actually a bidding phase, which I haven't seen before in a trick-taking game. How it, how it works is each player can look at their hand and get rid of a card if they'd like, or at least attempt to. Usually you'll want to keep the cards that are worth points and get rid of the cards that are not worth points, and usually the lower is better. So the player who starts the game is going to be uh, the player who plays the card first, and then no one else can play the same suit. So in this case, no one can play this, like, uh, it looks like spades, I suppose, or... Uh, I don't know what it is, brass knuckles. Um, and then everybody else can play a different one. So for instance, we'll play this star here. And then finally, this player can play anything that aren't these two, and hopefully that are worth nothing. You can also choose to abstain. And this would actually be a good example of a hand to abstain because you have a king, jack, queen, a seven, and a king. These are all worth points. So this player actually wants to keep their entire hand. 
Then, after that, everybody's bid, and based on whatever number of players, you're going to flip over the top card of the Abbastini deck. And if you have a match, and in this case you do, you're going to switch cards if you'd like. And in this case, you're going to switch that zero point card for a 10 point card. And then cards are all going to go back into players' hands. You'll take the card that was either swapped or not and place it under the deck here. And that will represent the trump suit for this specific round. And a round is pretty simple. That's the first part of the round. The second part of the round is everybody is going to play a card, starting with the player who won the previous round or the player who played first. And you're trying to match the trump suit or the starting suit. So if he doesn't have this card, maybe he'll want to play his highest card. Maybe he'll choose to play this ace here. Um, and if he does have the suit, which in fact he does, because he was the one who swapped, he'll play the seven there. Then the next player will have a chance to play a card and they can choose to play anything they want. If they don't want to get rid of their points, they can go ahead and dump a card. And then finally, the last player can go ahead and choose and play a card. And he's got this king here, but unfortunately, the king is not higher than the seven as far as point value goes. So he or she will probably want to keep that card. But unfortunately, because their hand is full of points, they're going to have to at least get rid of something. So they'll probably choose to get rid of this queen. It's worth the least amount of points. Then you'll check whoever has the highest card in the trump is the winner. And if no one has the trump suit, whoever has the highest card in the starting card is the winner. And in this case, the trump suit is available. It is seven and seven beats these two cards, in which case these cards are eaten. They'll be placed um, off to the side next to this player, which at the end of the game, they'll be counted as points. And whoever has the most points is going to be the winner. Then the next round is going to begin. Everybody's going to get a card. And then the player who previously won is going to start. They're going to look at their hand. And once again, they'll dump a card. Nobody can play the orange card now. Somebody's going to find another card. Maybe they'll go ahead and get rid of this purple one here because it's worth zero points. And finally, this player here, maybe he actually got a zero. Oh, he didn't. He's going to keep these guys and he's going to abstain. A card will flip during the betting phase. Now we have a situation where there is no there is no uh, swap. So basically these cards will go back into a player's, the player's hands, and that's information that is given to the other players who just chose to abstain. And this card is going to be the trump card. And once again, the round will go. In this case, this player actually has a queen. Go ahead and dump that card out there. Now the only way that this player can win is if they have a better uh, turquoise card here in which case they don't. So maybe they'll go ahead and dump a zero. And finally, this player over here is going to look into their hand. Yet again, they cannot beat this, so they're going to go ahead and place this lowest point total card. And this player, once again, is the winner of the game. And that's pretty much it. The game is just going to keep going on like that, playing up until this deck runs out of cards. Players are going to be bidding, trying to get cards they don't want out of their hands, and attempting to play on the trump suit or off of the starting suit. Now, obviously, playing first is going to be a bigger detriment because players will know what you've played down. So the last player has the final say if they have the cards they need. And of course, you can keep cards, hoard cards, to utilize throughout the game. And if you can, you'll, you'll get high cards. So in this case, this guy actually drew finally a zero. He can dump this card next round. He'll be part of the bidding phase. As far as teams go, you can watch the video. Re video explains kind of how teams work, but basically if we were playing a four player game, so in this case, we'll just go ahead and have this deck here and we'll show one, two, three, four, five cards. Everybody's got their five cards and we'll have our trumps here. And then we've got our eaten piles. Teams work like this. These two players are on a team, these two players are on a team. They play separately from each other, but they count points total at the end of the game. So you're going to be scoring with your teammate, choosing cards that might score them points on purpose, as well as choosing cards that are going to give the other team less points if you possibly can help it. And that's the game, Al Bastini. Eight different types of cards, eight different new suits to the game, eight different suits to the game, four new ones, based on a game that was, um, I guess, a, a more traditional game from Tanzania. Okay, let's come up and talk about the game. So let's discuss this trick-taking game. And the first thing that I noticed with this game is that the cards are not the same values as I'm used to for most trick-taking games. Like I said before, the seven ranks higher than like the queen and the king. And then obviously the ace is the highest. And obviously the jack and the queen are also switched. So you're going to have to go based off of point totals. It takes probably a game or two in order to get used to this new switch. But it is something that kind of was unique to me, right? Because most times when I think of trick-taking games, I always think of the two being the lowest and the ace being the highest, ace, king, queen, jack, ten, so on and so forth. And with this, it's a little different. Also to note that because the game has been reimagined from, I'm guessing, its original form, there are eight different sets of cards with a smaller number of cards in each of the different sets. And it's going to give you a more robust 
point of information or uh, access of information. You'll know what cards have been played based on what have been eaten, what cards are left over in the deck, and what cards are left over in your opponent's hands to some degree. An example for one of my first two games when I was playing, I had knowledge that there are black cards available in the deck, but also one of the players hadn't played their cards for a while. They were kind of saving them. And I had a couple small point black cards and I wanted to play them down to score points or to swap. But I knew if I did, it's very likely somebody else would have that. And I took the chance and went for it because I was hoping it'd still be in the deck. And it wasn't. The player had been saving them, dropped them down on me like a bomb and stole all my points. He did it twice, in fact, from the same suit. So that just goes to show you don't know what's going to be in the deck, what's going to be in the opponent's hands, and obviously people are going to want to hold on to the high point scoring cards, but having all of them as high point scoring cards when the trump suit or the starting suit are not those colors can forcibly make you give points to other players. So you have to kind of keep a balance in your hand. If you've played Hearts before in other trick-taking games, you're going to understand this game rather quickly. You'll understand that it functions like a trick-taking game with also a unique twist to it, the betting phase. You'll have cards you don't want in your hand because they're worth nothing. You play those cards out in hopes to gather the new card that pops up out of the deck at the cost of not getting it, putting it back into your hand, and giving players the information from your hand. Maybe you're going to have to play that card and get rid of it on that, act, on that turn, which could then give your opponents points or reduce the knowledge of your hand. Or maybe you'll actually score that specific trump suit and be the player to place that down. That doesn't mean you're necessarily going to win, but it usually gives you a higher opportunity to succeed, especially if it's like a seven or an ace. Players will also remember if you keep those cards for later in hopes to steal their points. So going first, usually you're going to have to sacrifice getting no points from your opponents, but scoring the points in front of you. The game's rather intense when you're playing with multiple players. You're also able to play in teams, which I would strongly suggest more players and in teams is going to be more fun because you're going to be able to cooperatively work together with your partners in attempts to score points together. Make sure that you guys give each other your points as well as to steal your opponent's points and make sure to try and give your opponents nothing whenever it is feasibly possible and there's going to be situations where it's not as likely to happen uh, the game is not a win more there's no opportunity for you, you, you know, to catch up you actually have to maintain the strategy you have throughout the entire game and solidify the cards in your hand for the right moment you can score 40 points in the game and have 50 points in your hand and the last four cards drop and you just score all the points you need to win. So it's always a possibility that you can come back in this game, especially with how you save cards and when you choose to use them. And obviously the knowledge of the cards in the deck, what cards are left over, more suits makes it a little more challenging, but it gives you that presence of knowing that the game is always going to be strategically relevant to players who constantly want to play the game and learn more. Uh, this is a pretty straightforward game, has a little bit of luck as to what cards you get, as to what types of cards pop out from the bidding session, and of course what cards are in your hand to start with. It all comes down to what you choose to play, when you choose to play them, and whether or not you want to play with more players. I, like I said, strongly recommend more players, strongly re recommend teams, and uh, it's a game that you're not going to want to stop playing after the first round. You're going to want to continue playing, especially if you like trick-taking games. For people who do not like trick-taking games, this is not going to change your mind about trick-taking games. It's still a trick-taking game at its center, at its core. Uh, obviously, it does have some unique differences. So for players who want something unique and new and different and want something that has some kind of kind of culture um, revolved around it, it's something I would strongly t suggest you take a look at. For me, it's like a solid straight down the line trick-taking game. I like the different nuances it has and changes it has as well. And I think for those people who are interested in a game like this, this is one I would strongly rec recommend you taking a look at. I'll be keeping this game in my collection and I'll also be having a game to give away. So I'm actually going to give away one of these games, whether it be on the live stream or on the website, for you to have an opportunity to win one. And for those people who are not so lucky, you can check the link down below in the description on Kickstarter where you can pick up the game Albastini for yourself. Thank you guys for watching another unfiltered gamer board game or card game review for the game Albastini. If you're interested, like I said, down below. And go ahead and check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. All kinds of stuff there. Giveaways, uh, Kickstarter lists, reviews, previews, etc, etc. You can also go ahead and like this video, comment on this video, let us know what you think about this game. Have you played this game before? If so, where and when? I'd be actually really curious to hear about this. This is the first time I've actually learned about Abestini, so it's kind of cool to see some new trick-taking style games come out there, especially with a bidding system. I like that. Uh, a small caveat, the rules definitely need 
a little bit of work. Um, I, I learned the game based on looking at a couple of videos and, and whatnot, but hopefully with this video, this will give you a full understanding of the game. I would recommend Kelly services on the website. Like that's what we do on the website, right? As well as of course, you can check our live streams every Wednesday at 6.30 PM PST. Watch us play games just like this one. You can see us play these games and determine for yourself if it's something you're interested in, along with of course, this review video. Thank you guys so much. And as always, I look forward to taking a trick with you next time.